There's a public outcry for people who want a better planet. And there are powers that be the left that people panic. Look at the Gulf of Japan, could they have really planned it? Heading for the iceberg like the Titanic. Atlantic mystery, Atlantis wife of mystery. The truth about the pyramids in ancient Mayan prophecy. Space Odyssey, look into the anomalies and you will find suppression of free energy technology. A false democracy born out of a monopoly. Sacred knowledge robbery like the towers they topple in. Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon. We are recording this on December 8th, 2013. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, Ramon, it has been an interesting ride this year. And uh, uh, man, yeah, I'm looking forward to 2014, although 2013 seemed to just go by in just a blink. It's like, it just seemed like yesterday. Seemed like yesterday. Yeah, it seemed like yesterday we were all getting ready for the big December 21st, 2012 thing to come through, and and now 2013's gone. <laughs> Just like you know, actually December 21st, we're all going to turn into crickets. Crickets. Yeah, that's the one I'm coming up with, and I'm going to sell thousands of books. <laughs> okay. Uh, crickets. Anyway. Oh, you you have a story on the website about uh, crickets, don't you? Yeah, that's why I mentioned crickets. Ah, well, go for it. What? Tell me about crickets, Ramon. Well, uh, anyway, this is a, a real story. Uh, us turning into crickets is just me making up. But this one, uh, someone recorded crickets, then slowed down the track, and it sounds like uh, people singing. And it actually does. And the, what the person did was they slow down the song and then play the um the regular speed of the cricket and the way they sound at a slow down speed and it sounds like a chorus um the beautiful it just sounds amazing um which is something which our guest you know he has a a good uh, music talent so you might want to look into that we have a special guest but uh the other news story that i found interesting I think we found Tom's home planet, since mm. he's been lost on this one for a couple of lifetimes. Um, Hubble telescope spots signs of water on five planets. Um, it, let me see if I can find how far they are. Oh, actually, here's the planets. Um, they're the uh, WASP 17b, the HD 20. 9458B and uh, WASP 12B and a WASP 19B and X01B. So, you know, I think they, they they need to come up with a little bit better names for these things, Ramon. Than WASP? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. What uh, What's with all... I, I mean, I can... Un- for a white Anglo-Saxon... Uh... <laughs> person? White Anglo-Saxon person? Protestant. I think Protestant. Oh, yeah. Let's throw all yeah. that stuff in there. But yeah, they, I, I mean, they could come up with better names. There's plenty of names out there to choose from. I almost didn't want to say those names. But anyway, yeah. Um, the last news story I found, this one's kind of interesting. Um, but I, I mean, this was a private, a private company. It's a um, Japanese firm uh, described proposed power belt for the moon. So, basically, let me see if I can read a little bit here for you. Um, Dubbed the lunar ring, um, the connected form architectural and engineering firm, the Shimizu Corporation, envisions a robot-built array of solar cells in a mile-wide belt along the entire 6,784 lunar equator. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the news of that. You guys can read into it, but I'm really excited to get into our guests. And so, guests yeah, been... real quick before you go off of that, at, oh, off yeah. of that story, uh, it's it's actually what they're showing there is uh, transmitting energy by laser to receivers in the ocean that will then distribute them around the planet. Which it, the idea is absolutely fascinating i mean it's wireless transmission of energy and it looks really dynamic uh the logistics of doing this wow a huge huge project but but the potential there oh my god what they say uh 19 or 
or 13,000 13, continuous terawatts of power. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that 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 boggles my mind. That's a tremendous amount of power, and you know, uh, I don't know how. I mean, how much would that power? How much? How, I mean, how much of the world could the planet could we power with thirteen thousand terawatts? Um, yeah, you know the funny thing about that story, Tom, is that this is one of those. I feel kind of this is one of those cases where the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing and the reason why i mention that is because nasa did that um the tether experiment where there was like those ufos in the back right but what's not really talked about that experiment is when the tether was dragging along the the orbit it picked up so much energy just off of off uh, our orbit that it exploded and luckily you know the shuttle um, they must have had some backup or something, but it was just way too much energy that this 12 mile tether couldn't handle that much energy. So they don't even have to go that far to get this power. You yeah, know? I don't know a whole lot about what that whole tether experiment was about. Do you know what their the purpose behind that whole experiment was? Uh, to see if they can gather power off the. Um, so they drag pretty much like a cable over the orbit and when they drag the the cable around is to see if they can get power off that and i think that's the same thing that tesla was um you know talking about the planets they generate so much energy so it's just tapping into that so i think there there's an easier way to tap into it and not have to build this huge array on the moon hmm. interesting so, interesting yeah yeah so, shall we get into it? Yeah, this, uh, before you read his bio, I just want to say we've had this guest on a few times, and every time is just amazing, and he's doing some amazing, great things, and actually, you know, I'm just really excited, and I, I love talking to people that do their research, and they put their mind to something, and you see the results happening, like, okay, I'm going to find out about this, and they do. So, Tom... Tell so we, we have Michael Tellinger back with us on the 100th Monkey Radio. He's uh, one of South Africa's best-selling export authors. Uh, and this is an old bio guy, so uh, you have to uh, check up on him. But, but he's, he's, uh, he regularly writes articles on human origins, and his book, Slave Species of God, has been praised by readers in over 20 countries. Michael's a scientist in the truest sense of the word never shying away from controversial issues, scrutinizing every clue meticulously. He graduated in 1983 from the University of Witwatersrand, Strand, however, I, I slaughter words like that, uh, medical school in Johannesburg with a B pharmaceutics degree, a passion for the cosmos, genetics, and human history. He's uh, put several different books out here recently, uh, Slave Species of God, we all know about, uh, he's got Adam's uh, 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 calendar. Oh, geez, yeah. Oh God, what's the one? I I've got the book on my coffee table. What the hell is it called? Oh, <laughs> uh, his, his his his. That's his newest work. Michael, help me out here. What was that? That uh, the coffee? Oh, Temples of the African Gods. That's what it was. Uh, it's, but he's done some absolutely fascinating work here recently, and just this last year, he was at that. He's been doing a lot of conferences and a lot of presentations, and he's has brought the word Ubuntu out into the alternative field and all the philosophies behind it. And uh, that's that's some of the most amazing work that that I've seen out of this man in the last couple of years. Michael Tellinger, welcome back to the Hundredth Monkey Radio. Thank you very much, Tom and Ramon. Lovely to be talking to you guys again. Great. And you have a new book out, uh, Ubuntu Contributionism. Uh, is, uh, when did this book come out? About four days ago. Oh, wow. Four, oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, it's brand new. Um, and that's what I've been really working on for the last um, four years or so. Um, and um, I just um, couldn't have picked a better time to release it. Um, the full title of the book is Ubuntu Contributionism, a Blueprint for Human Prosperity, and then a subtext, Exposing the Global Banking Fraud. 
Um, so that's really what it deals with. It it, it connects the dots uh, of, um, as you mentioned, what my research has been about human origins. Um, uh, presents a lot of evidence about the origins of money that uh, has been completely misunderstood uh, in the past and um, where it's all gone wrong and why it's gone wrong and then present the the philosophy of Ubuntu which I called contributionism um, which I believe is really the only way for humanity to move ahead because the philosophy is based on removing money from the system completely and utterly and not allowing people to be controlled by money or those that have usurped the rights to print and to, to control the supply of money to the population of our planet. Hmm. You know, the first argument that I hear whenever I talk about this sort of uh, philosophy is, is what, what about all those people that are going to take advantage of a system like that, that are just going to sit on their ass and do nothing? Uh, what's your answer there, Michael? Well, it, it, yeah, Tom, this is why I wrote the book, because uh, I've been doing this since 2005, and I've had these discussions with probably 10,000 people since then. And what you've asked is normally one of the three most commonly asked questions. I've identified 13 uh, commonly most frequently asked questions, after which it all becomes just derivatives of the first 13 questions. But the one that you've asked is normally one of the first three questions. What about the lazy people just sitting on their asses? Well, unfortunately, the, when people ask this, they come from a perception and, and an understanding and being completely entrapped and enslaved in the capitalistic system. Laziness is a side effect of capitalism because people are not lazy. Everybody does something that they love to do. And that's really what this is based upon. The only people, the only reason people are lazy is because, you know, you, you're told all your life you know, that you're no good for nothing. Uh, everything that you try to do uh, from your own initiatives, from your own passion, from your own love for whatever that subject is or that occupation is or that pastime is, um, gets beaten out of you at school. And then most of the time, people can't pursue their passions and their, their God-given talents because it costs a lot of money. And there are always hurdles and obstacles to progress for people to be able to do what they love to do, what they naturally are uh, good at, which not only benefits them and gives them a lot of joy, but it generally benefits everyone else around them and, uh, and brings a lot of joy and benefit to the instant community. So... Before you start asking those questions about, you know, uh, and this is all in my book, not just the first 13 most frequently asked questions, but I think I cover about 24 of the questions uh, that, have, that I've uh, encountered in the last eight years. And what you realize is that before you even start asking the questions, stop and ask yourself, how will the world change when there is no money? Because you can't ask the questions that immediately come to mind from the position that we're in. As Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve the problems with the same mindset that we were in when we created them. Right? right. So you've got to change your perspective completely before you start thinking about how, this, how the answers to these questions. But what I can tell you with great excitement is that the answers are so simple that when you see it and you get it, you're going to get so excited because you're going to realize how poisoned not just your mind is, but all our minds, how equally poisoned we have become by the current system. That's why we ask the same questions. We are equally poisoned and manipulated and indoctrinated and brainwashed so that out of all the problems in the world, just think about this as an incredible situation. All the possible problems that we could face in our lives it has been narrowed down to 13 most frequently asked questions. Isn't that an incredible thing? Wow. Yeah. It really not, is. Not, one, not 1,300. 13 questions that keep coming up like clockwork. It's incredible. That tells us that something dramatically is wrong with the system, that we are so trapped and so desperate and so unhappy and so confused that we're asking 13 questions and we have not been able to solve them. So the good news is that all we have to do is solve 13 problems and we'll, we can live in a utopian world where everything is available to everyone all the time in absolute abundance 
And this is why the book is so critical, because it takes you by the hand. It leads you through all the research and the argument for the origins of money and where it came from and why it was introduced, how it was introduced, how it's been manipulating the, the, the human race for thousands of years, not just hundreds of years, how it evolved into the modern banking families and how they now control the world through the, you know, the royal bloodlines, who are the, actually uh, uh, part of the royal the, the banking families. And how they've totally and utterly um, enslaved the world. Every single living, breathing human being, whether they know it or not, are under their control. And if they somehow escaped it and they think they're living utopian world somewhere in, a, in the distant jungle somewhere, well, I've got news for them. Sooner or later, these banking families will get to the jungle and they will start chopping down the trees for the benefit of industry and profit. So they affect every single one of us in ways that most people cannot even con co comprehend. So I outline all these things and then I present the simple solution that once you see the, the information stacked together, then there is only one conclusion we can reach. As Albert Einstein said, the two most important quotations from him, I believe, is that, you know, repeating the same system, uh, repeating the, the same um, experiment and expecting different results can be classified as insanity. Right. So we must be insane because we've been doing the same experiment with money for probably around 6,000 years, maybe a bit longer, since money has been introduced to humanity. And, and that is all in my book and the evidence for it. And then secondly is that what I mentioned earlier, that we can't solve the problems we, fi we find ourselves facing with the same mindset that we were in when we created the problems. We've got to have a paradigm shift away from the way we think. The only way we're going to solve these problems is to do something we've never done before. Because every single socio-economic system that we've had in the world as the human race has been connected to money and the control of money of people and their society. And when those who control the supply of money were challenged, they used their power and might through the money, and they used armies of people who were promised all kinds of things to stand against their fellow um, brothers, human beings, brothers, sisters, mothers and fathers, to defeat them in favor of, of uh, upholding the banking family's stranglehold on our planet. It's quite spectacular. Right. So the only thing that we can do is to remove money from the system completely. That has never been done. Never been done. It's been attempted several times, but always thwarted by the banking families. It, all you have to do is look at what's happened in the last um, 120, 140 years or something. Um, the, there were three... Uh, major prominent uh, world leaders, uh, two very famous and one infamous. The first one that tried to sideline the bankers was Abraham Lincoln. And you know what happened to him when he introduced right. the greenback. Um, they took him out. A hundred, exactly a hundred years later, John F. Kennedy introduced the United States notes who were printed for the people, by the people, not owned and controlled by the Federal Reserve. Six months later, he was assassinated by the bankers. It is now very clear and very obvious. All the evidence points towards that the bankers orchestrated his assassination the same way they did um, uh, Lincoln. Um, they're behind all the major wars and uprisings in the last 200 years, including all the wars in the United States, the First World War, the Bolshevik Revolution, the French Revolution, all those wars that we think were just... <clears throat> you know, spontaneous eruptions or whatever, were orchestrated and funded and controlled and manipulated by the banking families through their might and the money. Hmm. And then the, the most infamous or least known uh, situation was in South Africa in 1966, where the, the Prime Minister, Hendrik Verwoerd, who is also known as the father of apartheid, um, at that stage, South Africa was... Um, was, was uh, stated to be the most prosperous country in the world. Now, this, this will be news to most people because they think of Africa and, and blah, blah, as, you know, impoverished, etc. Well, right. that, is, that was not the case in South Africa. South Africa was the most prosperous country in the world with a booming economy, with a mineral wealth built beyond your wildest imagination, and a prime minister that was a rogue prime minister 
because he at that stage had decided to remove the South African Reserve Bank from printing the money for South Africa, the same way that J JFK did in 1963. Hmm. And um, what they then did is before he, because they learned from JFK and and. Uh, and and Abraham Lincoln, they knew that they couldn't allow him to get that far because it just it's just messy. So they preempted his decision, and they actually assassinated him before um, but before he um could implement it. Wow. Then they twisted the whole thing and made it to look like a crime of passion against a guy who introduced the whole concept of apartheid. That is not true. That was a contrived smearing campaign against a man who was probably hated for all the wrong reasons but the media the the banking controlled media smeared him uh, you know and turned him into a, a hateful individual which is not really who he was if according to the people that knew him it was all about the money right yeah. so so i want to i'm going to take a step oh, back a uh, step back real quick here, and uh, before we dig into a little bit more of the uh, the control structure and uh, the solutions that we have in front of us there, and uh, what, can can you explain to our listeners the uh, root and core of Ubuntu? Where does it originate from, and you know wh where where does this word come from, and this philosophy originally manifest on the planet? Well, Ubuntu, it's U-B-U-N-T-U, -U -U, Ubuntu, is an ancient African philosophy that has echoed around the world in all native populations, in all the ancient civilizations of the world, had similar philosophies under different names, but they all resonated with this kind of um, living environment. And that was um, then very maliciously attacked um, by by the ancient forces and, and, and what we're dealing with here is actually the Anunnaki um, who were the ones that introduced the concept of money to humanity if you want to call it the gods just like the gold belonged to the gods that the all ancient cultures will all tell you um, the money also belonged to the gods the money was given to them and introduced to them by the gods so um, the word Ubuntu actually stands for I am who I am because of what we all are and it's a philosophy that talks about sharing absolute equality, uh, benefit to the community through people's individual contributions to the whole community, and not about what is in it for me, but what is it, what is in it for us, all of us. And it's a truly um, um, great humanitarian philosophy that has been beaten out of the native populations as soon as the Westerners arrived. Uh, and this started in the late 1400s with the the dr rapid uh, colonization of the world as we know it today by the Spaniards, the Portuguese, the British, the French, the Dutch. Uh, they colonized the world from the late 1400s, and that's where it started. And the first thing they did is they claimed the land, they destroyed all the knowledge of the indigenous peoples that lived there, and they made sure that that indigenous knowledge was not passed down and uh, that was you know destroyed as far as they can what they did is they <clears throat> they separated the people from their ancestors and this is how you build a species with amnesia how you create a species with amnesia who doesn't know who we are where we come from and why we're here because all the ancient cultures knew the answers to those questions <laughs> right right as as we know when we start studying ancient human history and this is really why I am pursuing this whole Ubuntu philosophy, which in 2005, when I first started realizing all this stuff, I called it contributionism, because I didn't realize that Ubuntu and contributionism were actually very similar in philosophy. The only difference is that uh, contributionism is really more a attached to the modern way we live to explain to people how we're going to transcend a capitalist, money-driven society community and move from you know communities driven by money and hoarding to uh, united communities driven by people their passions and their their god-given talents and their skills for life uh, where they do what they're good at so that it benefits everyone 
whether you're a rocket scientist, a farmer, or a shoe shoemaker, or a seedling grower, or a builder, or an engineer, it doesn't matter. It, it, you have skills. Each one of us has skills that that will and do benefit everyone else when we apply them. Right, right. I'd like and, to run. Um, yeah. I'd like to run down a list of our inalienable rights that you have on your website under the Ubuntu section. Uh, just real quick so so uh, our listeners can hear this. Uh, our inalienable rights, the rights of all citizens. One, the country belongs to its people. Two, the land belongs to its people. Three, the water belongs to its people. Four, the forests belong to the people. Five, the rivers and lakes belong to the people. Six, the gold, the platinum, diamonds, chrome, copper, iron, uranium, tin, aluminum, and all other minerals in the ground belong to the people. The coal belongs to the people. The air and the airwaves belong to the people. Everything that grows on the land belongs to the people. The beaches, the mountains, and the skies abo above belong to the people. The wild animals do not belong to us or anyone else. They belong to the planet, and we are their custodians and protectors. Now, I, I that that list there to me, uh, it just the, it 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 says so much. Uh, I mean, and and that that is that paradigm shift that you're that you were talking about earlier in our way of thinking. If if we can all come to a point where we can see and know that that one basic list right there, those eleven points, if we can know those things within ourselves, uh, I think that's a huge step towards towards becoming a society based on uh, a simple philosophy as Ubuntu. Um, yeah. And and I'm glad you read that out because I actually forgot about that list. You know, I'm so caught up in in writing the rest of the book, which is 360 pages. It's a lot of information, um, and and that list is critical. Now I just also need to qualify something because some people you know get the wrong impression because they get a little bit too too finickety and too argumentative at times, and they say, well, it doesn't belong to us. The land doesn't belong to us. It, 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 you know, it belongs to the world. Yes. The reason I say this is that the land is there for the people to use. It's not there to be exploited by governments or corporations that have laid claim to it and have driven people off the land so that they called homeless. How could people anywhere on this planet be homeless? How is that possible? You know what I mean? It's just, it's an insane thought. The other insane thought is what we get from, you know, when you watch the, the economic news and the, the stuff that gets shoved down our throats over and over again as if it's really important. And that's what they do. Because remember, that's the modus operandi is to totally indoctrinate and brainwash people with insignificant crap that we believe is important because it's on TV. So this is why... The news is dominated by economics and financial reports because people, it's a subconscious indoctrinating um, tactic which has worked fantastically because people think that this is what makes the world go round. Wrong. That is what enslaves the world. That is what enslaves the people, what dumbs them down and makes them fall under the under the authority of those who call themselves bank masters or money masters or those who run the financial institutions. Those are the indoctrinated slave drivers that have enslaved their own families and children and their parents, not knowing what they're doing. Because once you realize that money doesn't actually exist, it's a synthetically created commodity. It's something that's created out of nothing and given value, and we run around working our lives away like slaves so we can lay our hands on these pieces of paper so that we can buy stuff and survive. Now, that is an insane thought. And another insane thought is what, what is often referred to in these financial reports is this thing called negative growth. Negative growth is a synthetic construct. Negative growth can only happen in a fictional environment. In a positive environment, there can be no negative can be no negative growth it's not possible for the world and the creation forces and the energy that drives and is behind all of creation you cannot destroy the energy so it's not possible to have negative growth can you see the difference here oh right so it, we're 
we're constantly led into believing that we live on a planet of scarcity where things are scarce. No, we live on a planet of abundance where everything is so abundant that it is, it is beyond our wildest dreams. This is why these corporations have taken control of all the areas of abundance, whether it's water and very soon it's going to be air. It's our roads. It's, it's, it's food. It's uh, the minerals in the ground. Free energy is abundant everywhere, and we need to talk about that as well. And, yeah. and they've, they've, they've closed it down so they can drip feed the human race only if they have money. And this is how they've planned this. They've, they've implemented it, especially over the last 200 years with the whole industrialization explosion. And, um, and just to explain negative growth, I mean, how is it possible that 7 billion people that wake up every morning and do something, each and every one of us does something, that means we are creating something. Even if we walk from here to the gate and open the gate, we've done something. It's a positive action. It's not possible for 7 billion people to create negative growth ever of any kind. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, that 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 term negative growth is a contradiction within itself. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. know, the other um, the other part that that I find always amazing that even people in this genre consistently talk about this, and which is that you know the planet is overpopulated. The way we live, yes, it's overpopulated with with the economics and you know with the money thing is definitely overpopulated, but. Yeah. In its natural form, no, not even close. No, not yeah. even close. And just, you know, there are two things that you need to remind people of is why do people live in cities? Because they, they came to the cities with a promise of wealth and fortune. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. They'd be living out in the country. Why yeah. do all the wealthy people in the cities have beautiful cottages in the mountains or in the countryside where they try and escape to on the long weekends and on holidays to get away from the city? The people that have got money have got cottages in the country. The poor people that are the slaves and trapped in the big cities, these these urban rat hole jungles, that 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 are just have become slaves for millions and mil. I mean, uh, tra uh, traps for millions and millions of people. They cannot get out of. There's no way out. Once you're trapped in that city, and if you don't have relatives or people that live outside of the city, you're stuck, buddy. Unless you're very brave and you just take a leap of faith and you get the hell out of there. And most people do not have that kind of faith. They're not brave enough. And uh, so, so the, the whole reason why people live in cities is because of money. Otherwise, they wouldn't live there. And, uh, and the moment you realize that money is the hurdle to all progress, everything we try and do, 99% of the things we want to do in our lives, we're prevented from doing because money becomes a hurdle to us doing that. So that's clearly not a way for us to create constant growth and constant, be constantly creative and produce abundance. And this is how the production of abundance gets thwarted as well by those who supply the money. So all we have to do is take the money out of the equation, let it not be a hurdle to progress, and allow people to do everything and anything they need. Now, that for us to move from the kind of uh, mental, confused state of mind that we're in to a world without money is not going to be simple. I mean, you know that. It's, it's, right. you know, it's going to take steps and stages to go from using money to no money and living in abundance. And because the whole world is completely and utterly wrapped up and controlled by the money and the banking families, it's a tough call and you know myself and many others who are busy trying to do that trying to build these ubuntu communities like we are in the town that i live you constantly running up against the same problems is money becomes the problem to even try and get off the grid to try and become self-sustainable you need money it's an right. insane situation mm. yeah, yeah you, you know the uh, sorry tom the other thing i find absolutely amazing is i saw it today um I was in Osaka earlier today and then I flew back to Tokyo. But also in New York, the biggest recyclers that you see, the biggest, the biggest uh, people that you use using all recycle items and are the homeless people. 
um, you know, you see them with big, big bags of cans and they're going through the garbage that we dumped out with the cans and the plastic all mixed. They separate it and go recycle it. Yeah. So, I mean, even those people that people say the quote unquote lazy people, they're the ones I see actually doing a lot of work into the system. Yeah. Well, there's another uh, simple answer as well for the question that you posed earlier, Tom. But I also, you know, I urge people, please go to my website and download the Ubuntu book as an ebook. First of all, you'll help fund the Ubuntu movement, help us build the Ubuntu community so we do not get hamstrung by money. And once we have one community built, I believe that could be the, the catalyst for the domino effect, not just in South Africa, but around the world. So go on to my website, michaeltellinger.com. Download the new Ubuntu book, read it, and internalize it, understand it, and then share it with others. Let it become your security blanket, because when you start talking about this to others, they come with hundreds of negative slings and arrows, right? Negative this and negative that. You know, how is this going to work? Oh, you're just an idiot. You haven't thought about this. You haven't thought about that. What I can tell you, I have thought about more things than anyone else out there has thought about. This is why I can be so bloody arrogant about it, because I've spent eight years facing thousands and thousands of, of doubting Thomases and throwing all kinds of curveball questions at me. And that's why it's allowed me to be so confident about it, because I realized that there are only a few problems we have to solve to get out of this mess. And that is the most exciting message I can share with everyone listening to this recording. So um, just get the book and it'll provide you with a lot of answers and give you the confidence to talk about this. You know, let it become like your, if somebody's got any questions about it, give them a book and, and let them read it. Because unless you're totally familiar with the subject, it is very easy to trip you up, very easy to make you doubt, very easy to go, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. I don't know how that's going to work. The answers are very simple, and you'll find most of them in the book, but you'll also find your own answers to some questions that have not been answered. The best thing is this, that what, what I found is that it's a self-corrective, self-correcting system. We cannot screw it up because it follows the natural order of things, the laws of nature. It follows the sacred geometric principles of correcting itself whenever you introduced an, uh, an, uh, an alien um thought or an alien activity that is not good for the whole of the people. It will be expelled by the collective, uh, the unity consciousness of the people. And, you know, it might not make sense to you while I'm saying it right now, but we got to restructure and rethink and, well, rethink first and then restructure the entire way that we live. We make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, completely dismantle the governments. And, and allow people to govern themselves in, this, in their own self-organized communities, that they do what's best for the community and best for having abundance for themselves and those around them and not be dictated to by some government in some distant city that has no interest in the well-being of the people of your community except the profits of the corporations that have enslaved the people in your community. And this is what needs to be undone. I, you know, I, I, you brought up a really, really poignant point there about about the self-correcting system. And what I see happening and what I've seen happen in my own life is that as I start to, you know, as I started to break away out of the system and start seeing the system for what it was, uh, a lot of these things, that these internal things started coming online for me as far as, uh, you know, feeling and sensing the energy of the collective and being able you know those psychic gifts started coming um, closer to the surface and I was able to see and feel and sense the rightness and wrongness of different things and ideas so what I'm I guess the point I'm I'm making here is that uh, I noticed for myself and I think this is will be something that everyone else will experience also that as you do start moving away from the control system, then all these different things start coming online for you. The empathic abilities and, and the, the, the knowingness that we get within self that, that 
uh, of something that is right and something that is wrong and and th the way uh, you know universe kind of help nudges me onto the right path for the next thing that I need you know it's as yeah. a, when the student is ready the teacher appears type thing and and so I guess uh, a question I'll get out of this is where do you think humanity is and our social consciousness is uh, uh, do you think we're 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 getting close to making these steps uh, very much so. Just look around you, what's happening in the world. People everywhere are desperately unhappy with the situation. M many of them, I'd say a large majority of the people, don't really know why they're unhappy, but they know that something is wrong with the system. They know that it's probably not salvageable, and they know that we have to do something else, but they don't know what it is we have to do because they're still trapped in this paradigm that they're looking for solutions within the financial institutions. And they say, why aren't our governments solving the problems? Why aren't the banks and the money makers solving the problems? Because they're the ones that create the problems. So, but once the people realize that that's the situation, then obviously there'll be a huge turnaround. But at the same time, even though these people, the majority of the people of the world are, may still be uninformed and living in the dark many and large numbers are becoming enlightened and reaching high levels of consciousness on a daily basis it's a rapidly exploding and I believe exponentially exploding situation and I believe that's directly connected to the fact that our consciousness is that that, that the universal consciousness is actually activating our DNA because consciousness is requ is a requirement for for life in the universe, and um, and uh, therefore it's got to be the, the the unity, the source consciousness that is actually activating through the galactic light, and and the things that we've shown and has been sh scientifically proven that the light from the galactic core is actually activating our DNA, and that our DNA is the the so-called junk DNA is activating at a rapid rate. And it's that in that junk DNA that lies the what I believe is the divine encoding of the human race, hmm. and that's relatively new information that that I that I stumbled upon uh, just several months ago, that has been there all these years, but as you know, you've got to go through the process until you realize it's been staring you in the face all this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> to to answer your question in a nutshell, yes, the world is ready and it's becoming more and more ready and I, I truly believe that uh, the reason why my book has come out now is because the world is more ready now than a year ago. A year ago it, there were still too many arrogant people and you know it, you'll see what happens to people is, is they're all very very um, <clears throat> arrogant and self-assured and self-righteous because they're doing well they've just got a new job they got a promotion they bought a new house they got a new car they got the wife and two kids they got a you know a, a cottage on the beach somewhere in the mountains they feel they're just you know cruising and doing great nothing gets in their way until they hit skid row or until they get fired or until something happens or uh, they suddenly lose that income and the bank comes to foreclose on their property. Then you see how quickly they change their mind. And so in a roundabout, strange, but twisted kind of way, those who are creating the enslavement, the banks, and uh, are enslaving humanity, who are also creating the, the ego, self-righteous, driven individuals that are upholding the system, by foreclosing on more and more of these people, they are turning them into enemies, if you want to call it that, of the system. And they're making those people wake up and realize uh, something is not right here. I was a good citizen. Look at me. I did what I was asked to do. I'm patriotic. I pay my debts. I pay my taxes. I do everything. And now I'm on skid row and I'm going to hit the streets. You know, and suddenly they realize that that's what millions and millions of others have gone through. Mm, yeah, it's that proverbial double-edged sword. You know, they're trying to yeah. do one thing, and it's creating creating a, a fertile ground for awakening for us. People are asking questions. Oh, that's... Yeah. Uh, I need to also just uh, tell you the, 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 my five-point mantra for the Ubuntu contributionism system. And it's also, you know, like the points that you mentioned in the beginning... Um, it's it's important just to internalize these and think about them because they'll help you 
answer all the questions that will come up in your mind if you're new to this and you haven't thought about it before. Um, Ubuntu contribution as a mantra is no money, no barter, no trade, no value attached to anything greater than anything else because all our, con all our contributions are and should be seen as equally valuable. Um, and, uh, and finally, where everybody contributes to the greater benefit of the whole community um, and not just for their own um, benefit. So those are the five key points. And it's, it's interesting because it's out of a, a Pentagon and out of a five-point, a, a five-sided um, um, structure that we get the, the golden spiral, the, one, the five factor, the 1.618. So there seems to be a correlation between the five-point mantra and, and the golden spiral that's behind the, the laws of nature that we see around us. And um, and that brings me to what we got to talk about. And and you know when people start asking these questions and they become really, they start wrestling with the with you know how is it going to be possible? All that it is possible. It's going to happen. It's the only way we're going to go ahead. And the sooner we start looking for solutions and f and recognizing the solutions instead of dwelling on the negative. Oh, it's never going to happen. How can it happen? Let's start thinking about how we're going to implement it. Look at the solutions instead of dwelling on the negative. And those solutions are in my book. They're very simple. And as I said, once you see how simple it is, it's going to put a smile on your face as you go through this. Um, you know, I think that's the a... Key, the, the key thing here is energy, right? But uh, j just go for it, Tom. And then I'd like to talk about the energy thing. And that's really critical. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think uh, one of the one of the key... Uh, components here, and this goes right back into some of the basic uh, uh, fundamental things that we learn about consciousness and how we create in this world, is to be able to visualize, to be able to, once you get these points down and you start understanding them and you start integrating them into your own lives, being, being able to visualize this stuff for our future, uh, that, that creative visualization helps to bring about the reality of it. I mean, if we if we are constantly focused on the negative, on the bad, on, you know, all, all the troubles and and crap that the system is throwing at us constantly, if we're not able to balance that out with with a vision of what would be right, uh, what would what would work here for all involved, if we can't have that vision, then we're not going to be able to create it. So it's re I see it really important for people like you who are putting this material out here and all these other people that are out that are that are uh, you know raising the consciousness of the planet. You know, it's it, that creative visualization is important. Yeah, totally. So part of this creative visualization, I'd like to just you know remind people of the following: What's one of the first consequences, or what are the consequences of removing money from the system? Um, no, we're not going back to the dark ages. It's also one of the 13 most you know, frequently asked questions. No, we're not going to the dark ages. In fact, think about it critically. Come on, use your brain. If you remove money from the system, what's going to happen to science, technology, inventions, and the motor industry, the oil technology industries, the energy companies? What's going to happen to that area? What's going to happen with immediate effect? all the thousands, if not millions, of scientists and inventors around the world that have solutions of free energy, that have solutions for anti-gravity or gravity devices, for different kind of transportation systems that work without any fuel, not even water, just magnetic fields that not only create propulsion and levitation systems, but also heal disease in your body. And all these other benefits that suddenly come flowing out of the system, out of out of the people of the world. That's the first consequence, one of the one of the critical consequences of removing money from the system. Because at the moment, the electricity supplying and uh, industries um, and the oil supplying industries are probably the most um, fiercely protected industries. They will they have killed many, they have silenced many they have threatened many so that new energy and alternative energy devices do not make it onto the, the, into the global domain. Those days are over and we're very, very close to finding alternative energy solutions. It is not going to be possible for them to, to keep it under, under covers for much longer. 
The mm. moment we have a free energy device, it's very difficult to control people because once you can go and live anywhere you don't need electricity supply you don't need petrol for your car you don't need gas in your house because you've got heating you've got propulsion you've got energy for everything you can imagine <clears throat> it's very difficult to control people and i believe that's when we're going to see the real breakdown of of the control structures very very quickly um mm. as people who have been oppressed controlled threatened or paid off will come out and speak openly about their experiences and also burst that bubble um, while at the same time you'll start creating um, uh, self-sustained communities of people that really provide everything they need and this is where the Ubuntu philosophy comes in hmm. so you know but you know you need to still understand how communities can can function on, a, on this philosophy of benefiting everyone on every level because the other consequences of taking money out the system, just think about this for a few seconds, is the immediate side effects are that virtually all crime disappears. Think about 99% of the crimes committed in the world are because of money. Money, money, money can be connected to everything. Right. Even, and, and I know what some people will think, and I've heard this, as I said, thousands of times, what about crimes of passion and crimes of insanity? Yes, there are answers for those. Very simple. And believe it or not, those are also connected to money. I know this doesn't make sense, but there's not enough time for me to go into detail here. But it, all the evils in the world and the restrictions placed on humanity, the dire situations that we find ourselves, the misery that people, everything we find ourselves in that is negative and affects us negatively is directly connected to the money thing. So the moment you remove it, you release people from this insane enslavement. All crime virtually disappears. No, you know, there's no need for hoarding because if things don't cost anything and everything is available to everyone because that's what people do, you know, rocket science make that farmers grow food, shoemakers make shoes, glass blowers make beautiful glass devices, engineers engineer, and so it goes. You know, you can extrapolate this. You know, to to the Google number, <laughs> right, right, and um, and and what's exciting about this is if you remove money, you also prevent, you also remove the hurdle to people doing things because that they currently prevent it from doing. Because under the 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 capitalistic system controlled by money, people will never be allowed to do by the financial structures to do things that are not financially viable. Even though your community may need it, right. every day, millions of people's dreams are shattered, not by their mothers or fathers or their priests, but by bankers, shatter millions of people's dreams because they say, sorry, Mr. Smith, you're a very good baker. I can see that your, baker, your bread is delicious. My wife loves your bread, but unfortunately, we can't give you the money to start your bakery for your community because the model does not make financial sense. So right. you, as the world's greatest baker, cannot bake bread for your community because the bankers have stopped you from doing that. Right, it's, right. It's, it's insane. It is absolutely it crazy. It is insane, yeah. So, um, so how's, how's the village coming along? It's tough. It's, it's a tough call, you know. We're looking for volunteers now. Um, we've got to become self-sustainable ourselves. We've got to sustain ourselves against the monthly um, financial demands on us. So we got to do that, and so that's phase one, to get the volunteers to come and work with us at the, the Ubuntu um, head office, if you want to call it that, um, and, and then from there start implementing the, the various community projects that we have in mind. And they beautiful, simple projects, obviously, growing food on a, in, a, in a vegetable garden that has failed. Uh, completely, that should be providing food for, for the whole town. Uh, there's a deserted fish farm that we want to reactivate to breed fish for the whole town. And also, remember, the model of Ubuntu is not just to create uh, subs uh, um, 
sufficient for yourself. It's got to be the three times principle, the Christ consciousness or the Holy Trinity principle. You got to you got to produce three times as much as you need, so that you don't create a closed system. Because the closed system that's self, only self-sustained and screw everybody else is just another form of me, me, me. What's in it for me? So right. you got to create abundance from within your Ubuntu community that can feed and provide for all your surrounding communities that cannot do the same for themselves. And by doing that, you then uh, destroy their capitalistic model and very quickly show them the way towards doing what you're doing. So you can imagine once you've got a number of um, uh, community projects from growing you know, your own food to fish to dairies to butter, milk, cheese to bakeries, to wood factories, to me metal factories. Once all that is active and producing, and uh, just let your mind run wild, okay? Uh, you can imagine what communities can do if you've got the people actively involved every week and every day in these community projects. You can create so much abundance that it'll virtually be available for free to all the people of that particular community. Mm. But... Now you export it to the people around yourselves. You make it available to them at a fraction of the price that they get it in their own town. And that moment you do that, you've completely destroyed the whole capitalistic model of their, home, of their own community. Hmm. But yeah. the question is, how do you get the people to participate in these community projects? <clears throat> because unfortunately, we are deeply divided individuals. We are traumatized. We are scarred. We don't trust each other. People fear other people. You know, we, we are completely abs uh, consumed by fear of everything, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, it, so we've got to, there's got to be something that, that makes the people want to participate in these community projects. And this is where it becomes really interesting. Some communities are very, you know, they, they uh, well integrated. It'll be a lot easier in some communities. Other communities are deeply divided, like the community that I live in. There's at least 50% unemployment here. So you'd think that the unemployed people will, will go for this, but that's not necessarily so because they're still poisoned by the capitalistic principle. If I do this for you, what's in it for me? Right. Right? <laughs> so um, what what our plan is the to kickstart this entire uh mentality of, of contributing some of your time towards community projects is by presenting the people with an option of free electricity. Now we have a river in town here and my objectives are to call a public meeting and present the very simple plan of putting a bunch of um, hydro turbines under the bridge that will provide enough kilowatts to give everybody in town free electricity. Now there are ways of doing it because there are there's actually a government policy that encourages municipalities to take control of their own electricity supply. This has, however, not happened. Not once has this happened. Wow! Right. So we want to be the first to spearhead this, and and once the people know that we can have free electricity by putting in you know spending or once of expense and putting in the turbines in the river uh, I think everybody's gonna get very excited now the payoff is that if you will you can get free electricity but you have to contribute three hours a week towards one of the community projects of your choice that's not a big ask is it no not at all no no exactly that changes so everything. imagine a town a town of 4,000 people that's 4,000 man hours a week. Sorry, four, that's 4,000 times that's three. That's 12,000. 12,000 12, man hours a week. Do hmm. you know how much you can do with 12,000 man hours a week? A tremendous how much amount. Abundance. This is, you see, now just see that as the golden shining light at the end of the dark and gloomy tunnel of misery of humanity. If every community can just do that, Figure out something that will be attractive to the community. And in return, everybody must work for three hours a week in one of the community projects of their own choice. Mm -hmm. And in return, get something for free. And that f electricity, I believe, is probably the best carrot. Uh, that's right. a carrot that everybody, everybody will go after. Absolutely.
Yeah. Well, the the before we end, Tom, I wanted to mention uh, with the and maybe we could start off with that question in the next hour. But the whole housing thing, um, you know, I've been following a lot what Earthships uh, have been doing. Have you have you ever looked into Earthships? Oh, absolutely. That's part of the whole um, new way of thinking. Remember that the way we build our houses today is completely un productive they they're not insulated they they terribly designed they don't last very very long uh, a little bit of a, a whirlwind and and they get you know sucked out or blown over and um or fire comes and burns them down and so the way we build our houses are terrible plus also they have these square things that do not allow the flow of energy so the whole way that we structure our societies and our towns and villages and communities and the way we build our buildings must also be dictated or directed or inspired by the laws of nature. Mm -hmm. And those are very simple principles that the, the really smart architects and the smart builders know this and they have been implementing this for a long, long time. Some of the most famous buildings in the world are built along those principles and have those encoded in them the sacred geometric principles that are actually healing and soothing to the human body rather than um, structures that are built in certain shapes that actually destroy destroy your energy and make you sick. So this is all very important part of, of the, the, the rebuilding of our communities. So you can imagine how exciting that's going to be. Absolutely. When the, the builders and the contractors and the people that love to build and love to work with their hands, that's a skill that many of us w would want to use and apply if we could actually survive. So if that's what it is that you're good at, then that's what it is you'll be doing in your community. And it's not just going to be one or two builders that are only available to those with money. It'll be a whole horde of builders that have previously been denied the opportunity of building in their community and beautifying their community and adding value to the people in their community with their own skills and talents that they couldn't do in a money-driven society. Right. Okay, well, we've, we've uh, gone over our uh, uh, time on the first hour just a little bit, but that's not a worry. Uh, people... Uh, best ba place for people to get a hold of you is michaeltellinger.com, correct? That's right. Um, if you want to email me, my email is there, but please keep your email short and to the point because at this stage, it's gone out of control. I can't control the emails coming in anymore, so I can't respond to everyone, and I hardly ever respond to people anymore. It's just it's just not possible. Yeah, so, But if imagine. you have something really important, if you have something really important, just keep it really short, bullet points and 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 bang it off to to me or uh, or Louise, um, or c a contact. Also go to Ubuntu Party, so that's uh, ubuntuparty.org.za, and uh, and the email is uh, contact at ubuntuparty.org.za. Great, great. All right. Well, we're gonna take a short break here, and then we'll come back and uh, continue this fantastic conversation with Michael Kellinger. Uh, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. The love you deny is the pain you carry. And we're going to let the luminaries, free energy, take us out. Sacred knowledge robbery, like the towers they toppled in. No stopping free. Jay Bray, Lido C. Coming from the inner me. Free energy. The oil's running dry. Our money's burning out. Solar panels on the roof of the White House. Hey! We bringing on some real change. Water catchment systems. We collect the rain. Time. Gather round, the moment's now How will it all turn out? And from the crowd Be the one who's the man And change your time for free And a day Time to free and a day yeah. Nikola Tesla Perceive the earth as a conductor of acoustical resonance And still his presence lives in the heart of visionary invention Over 5,000 patents censored Researching zero point energy Trying to get through delirium The unified field theory of the scene Every minute and every day we carry in the burden of our past Water fuel cars, we no longer need the gas So many solutions right here in your face Raw earth energy, create what rejuvenates Green walls and green roofs, grow plants on everything Magnetic moon
movements, don't need gas for anything, space we sprockets, doing our own research, paying out of pocket, bike powered stages, you pedal in our rocket, fully access to techie knowledge, green power over big profit, you can't stop it. Stop. Third industrial revolution Invention is the language of a worldwide solution The body electromagnetic Plasma arc reactive stubble field Kowski frost Free the knowledge lost Some people wait for 2012 to watch the earth shift But in New Mexico they out there building earth ships We got the language wrong I got a new twist The lifting of the veil That's the true apocalypse Some see free energy as the enemy But my genetic memory Remembering that that could never be Thoughts float in the anti-gravity A cubic foot of space can fuel the whole world annually You can choose a love or hate, revolt or maybe meditate And every day we demonstrate so we can finally get it straight Peace worldwide is the anthem that we celebrate Free energy like the end of the movie Same. Time.